Oh, hey, what's up? Uh, uh, it's Griff Burns Books. I'm Griff. I'm moving. Big news. The Humble Home Office is getting all switched up. So we're packing up all the books. But I did owe you one book review. And I'm very, very late because it's been an amazing summer. Been having a good time. So I did finish this amazing book. Lies My Teacher Told Me. Everything Your American History Textbook Got Wrong. James W. Lowen. Really good book. We're going to get to burning it and reviewing it very quick at Griff Reviews Books. It's not Griff Burns Books. And who knows? We'll keep the YouTube channel. I'm going to read some poetry. Got some other stuff. Some fun news coming about a second self-published book very soon. But uh, yeah, speaking of pub self-publishing and poetry this is my book burned in babylon and you know it's history day today we're going over history we're packing up some a uh, gris history here and uh we're moving to a new home office very soon big news uh cool stuff coming out my book will come out in october so pay attention to that pedantic poetry and lost hipsters this is my book burned in babylon um and there's some poems in here that i actually like most I don't, um, so most I think are shit. I wish I never published them. How's that sound? So, yeah, there's a regret. I got some regrets. <clears throat> this is uh, one of my poems that I wrote that's just kind of silly, so I'm going to read it to y'all. It's called Memes to the End. <clears throat> what are ends? Do, do you have the means? What if all we had were memes? No poetry, no nothing. Memes make a part of me. I love toxic memes, but sometimes they don't love me. Sometimes they mock me. Meme, you betrayed me. Now everything is dark and depressing. This meme ended me. What did it cost? Selling your soul for laughs. Was the meme worth it? Was it as good for you as you thought it would be? <clears throat> what if all we had were memes? And then, so that's that's an interesting one, right? What if all we had were memes? So, I, I don't hate that poem. I, I definitely think there's some stuff, some work to do. Obviously, I'm reading it to you not very well, but I, I'm packing up, man. I'm doing my best here. Love the best, dog. Back up, bro. Just saying, you know. Uh, here's another me, not a meme, <laughs> poem that I wrote that has history interwoven into it. So uh, pay attention and let's see if you can get the history on this one and uh, if you can guess it. So trust no one. Homage to Marta Hardy. <clears throat> Who was she? French resistance before it existed. The French have a long history of executing their own. Betrayal like this is more of a new thing for Americans and British. Was she guilty of sleeping with the enemy? Who isn't honestly? <clears throat> she was executed by men. Men who made her into what she be. Interwined propaganda, legend, and history. When my commanders execute me, I'll go, I'll go blowing kisses to the treasonous squad. Firing. What happens when the hunter becomes the hunted? Will justice ever be a reality? We can't all get along. Her answer was on October 15th, 1917. And that's a uh, trust no one homage to Mata Hari. Who was, who was, take a guess, World War I French uh, spy. Yeah, okay, good. You almost got it. You almost got it, dude. You almost got it. Um, and another oh, history poem from the highfalutin historian Griff Griffiths. Uh, this, this poem is called Caligula Always Wins. Dressed in purple, draped in sin, no actual battles won, no wars really fought, just noble training and being Caligula's party guard. Lean in close, Praetorian. Let me whisper tales of the north, savages of the Rhineland. They are just men. They, their spirits burned with the fire of freedom. Like all men, even the non-Roman. Do you see who you support? Pedophiles and perverts? Emperors like Caligula, lean close. I will show you the course. Let this all begin again. The alpha to the omega. Let your gladius set in motion. The beginning of the end. Assassination, murder, justice from within. Six separate tyrannists for me. For those who, with no honors from home, no glories or wealth from Rome. For us, this is vengeance. For tyrants can't always win. And that's uh, Caligula always wins. Sorry. <laughs> Bam. Poetry, y'all. And history. I, I like Caligula always wins. You tell me what you think. Um, 
yeah, it's it's all in my book. Like I said, those are a few poems. I don't hate Burned in Babylon, Broken Bitter by Not Ever Giving Up, The Manifesto of Robin Rolf Griffiths, The Toxic Grunt. A lot of them I do hate. So in October, we're going to cheat. First attempt coming back. Going to hit a second edition on that one. Um, writing skills are always improving because I'm writing every day. And I'm reading every day. And this book whew, blew my mind away. I just got to say. You know what I'm saying? Um, lies. My teacher told me everything your American history textbook got wrong. So I do have some notes here too. Um, first, I'm going to answer some pretty simple book review questions about James L. Lowen's book here. Or James W. Lowen. Uh, sorry about that. First, uh, <clears throat> I got this book as a gift. My wife and my beautiful children gave me this gift as a birthday gift. I read it. It's amazing. I learned from it. I hope my children heard that part of this video. Dad learned from your gift um, and he enjoyed learning from it. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's where I heard about it and how I got a hold of this book. And uh, it's very well written, very robust index. Okay, so this is a, a true to form history book okay but here's the cool thing about this history book follow me real quick on this it's actually a history book about all the history of american text american history textbooks so it's a critique of all the textbooks used in america to taught his teach history and uh it's well written it's well thought out it's very uh logical makes lots of sense um Lots of references in here that are very interesting. There was one reference that I got from the index about a, a Phoetian event that happened that's completely unrelated to the subject material. Um, so what the author does here is he reads all the textbooks and then he essentially critiques them. And his conclusions are what I really enjoyed about the book the most. Um, there is quite a bit of political spin I would call it anti-American rhetoric, maybe, okay, maybe, 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 maybe. sorry, dude, sorry, sorry, a little critique of your book, um, there's some parts in the beginning where he talks about the herofication of uh, founding fathers like George Washington, etc., um, I'll leave that alone because, you know, it is what it is, um, lots of things you can learn from this book, mostly all the shit you're history textbook got wrong um and there's there's no real like nuggets the one thing i didn't like about this there's not like a something to latch on to that's like super cool about american history which actually makes it a more analytical and less uh subjective book so i actually i didn't enjoy that part of it as much i i, I needed like you know secret pirates meeting in uh, Roanoke Island somewhere to like keep my interest and it just isn't here so it's very dry very academic very well written um, let's get to some of my notes here the theme of the book is that that we're teaching history inaccurately and not not just inaccurately but um, first of all the American exceptionalist viewpoint of history is naive and to be blunt about what I think about American exceptionalist history or McCarthyism is that it's uh, corruptive and corrosive and just dumb. Sorry. Um, America's never been perfect. It has its flaws. And I've always been a revisionist, progressive historian who would like to highlight uh, the non-heroes -her of the typical American textbook. That is what this author, James Lowen, essentially diagnoses American historians with and it's correct um, the the textbooks he backs it up with plenty of references and all that fun stuff in that book um, this book right here and it, it is at least entertaining enough to keep me involved in reading it although I did slow down over the summer I slowed down a lot uh, took a beautiful vacation with my beautiful family my son graduated so I took a little bit longer time uh, moving the house and the, the office, so some stuff's going on. But everyone should read this book. But more especially, the people who should read this book 
are history teachers. So lies my teacher told me, James W. Lowen, check it out if you're a history teacher. And what I really enjoyed is the conclusion of the book. In the back of the book, um, the author t tends to tell everyone that we would be better off if teachers taught history in reverse. So starting more at like the civil rights movement and working its way back to the American Revolution instead of painting these big gigantic heroes of the American Revolution, Washington, Franklin, Jefferson, and then spending like a week on everything up till now, which is kind of what my history class was more or less. I had an amazing history teacher, and maybe I'll, I'll talk about that real, real quick. I had an amazing progressive revisionist a high school history teacher. Mr. Henry was outstanding at filling in the gaps that the textbook left. And not just filling in the gaps, but but offering different perspectives and maybe even sometimes counter arguments to what the textbook was saying. Although he did it in a way that was palatable for youth, myself especially, and that stuck. Okay, so um, that's the most important thing. And uh, I do have a quote here that I kind of thought of when I was reading this book. And it's, they assert the very things they assail. They set up straw men whom they may attack. And that's a quote attributed to Martin Luther. There is some spin, there's some po politics in this book, as in there is in academia, to be anti-American, anti-constitutionalist, and anti-establishment. Um... That's unfortunate because it offers some really good insights in how we could teach history better. But there's also a really good case for we need to rewrite all of our American history textbooks. We need to add in the perspectives of those who have been oppressed by, quote unquote, the establishment a whole lot more. That's my opinion. Um, I have no problem adding in plenty of stuff about the civil rights movement, but let's make sure we highlight that in the context of that was what, like 70 years ago now, right? So like, that's what's important, more relevant to our situations today politically. And that's why history is so important, is a context for p truth. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's history. Um, that's my definition context for truth so check it out because lies my teacher told me is an amazing book everyone should read it but if you're teaching history you either have read this book or you need to read it period um just to round it out let's let's read another poem let's you're here you're still here i want to go ahead and just read a, a, a poem that i consider my best poem um one i definitely don't regret publishing matter of fact i'm i'm proud that i published this poem and <clears throat> a lot of people told me it's their favorite poem that i've wrote so here it is wisdom and war the wise abhor war saber rattling their position in conflict the wise avoid war information is intellect but wisdom is experience the wise always settle the score history forgets the wise but remembers the war none forget heroes of conflict Virtue signaling their glory and fame. Mocking those who can't remember a name. Mocking those with a damaged brain. The wise like to shame the brave who can't avoid war but abhor it the same. The brave, the brave never know the score but settle it the same. The brave charge like the light brigade. The wise avoid war. Saber rattling for all their glory and fame. The wise dot 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 abhor the brave. And that's Griff. I'm going to get back to packing up because I'm probably already in trouble with the missus. You know what I'm saying? She's probably like, get your ass to work and stop ranting about poetry and silly history on YouTube, Griff. So I'm going to finish packing up. I'm going to read more books. My next one, I'm going to do a review for you <clears throat> right here from my friend Blair Hope. Full disclosure, Blair is my buddy. So this is going to be a, a quick review. And his book, Is There Hope? A Guide for Men to Become Confident, Great Leaders, and, and an Example to Others. Be the dude who people want to follow and be like. The ability within you to become the, a positive, powerful force for good and still be a badass. Okay, so that's the next book review coming at you. Big news, lots to do, lots to do. Pedantic poetry and lost hipsters. 
October 13th is the release date. Fingers crossed everything happens. This is Griff. Everybody love everybody. Out.